The schmuck doesn't know what's happening. 25! Just one more white ball, and here it is! Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Scholars, welcome to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger, a professional artist and a master educator attempting to provide you with the best in our historical content. If you like the content, you always got to make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and do all those things. The good residents of Wabasha, thank you. You are so butt blind, you think this whole damn thing is about a stupid fishing pole. What's it about then? I get it. What do you mean, forget it? Don't give me that forget it crap. I want to know. So today I'm in the neighborhood of Max and John, the grumpy and grumpier old men. And uh, back in the day, they used to go right across the street here to this house owned by Ariel. And she was pretty into photography and the arts. Do you paint? Paint? Me? Uh -huh. Sure do. I paint the shed every spring. <laughs> At any rate, there's a famous photograph that came from right here in Minnesota called Grace. Today, I want to talk a little bit more about that. So let's jump right in. Now this photograph, Grace, started out as a black and white photo in 1918 by a Minnesota photographer by the name of Eric Enstrom, a Swedish-American photographer from the northern Minnesota town of Bovi. Now, Enstrom had a small photo studio where he was struggling during World War I, and he was building up a portfolio to sell some prints and things when there would be a knock at the door. Who's your guy yakking at your door? Just mind your own business, will you? The town drunk, Charles Wilden, shows up selling boot scrapers, and Enstrom was instantly captivated by the white, bearded, and kind-eyed gentleman that had a fairly sour reputation in the community. Now again, Enstrom thought he would be the perfect subject for a photograph, and he asked him to come in and sit down for a picture and offered him some money for his time. And needing the money, he obviously thought it would be a good use of his time. I want to ask you something. Oh, what? For Christ's sake, I ain't got all night either, you know? I'm just as busy as you Listen. are. So he comes in, sits down at a table, and Mr. Enstrom collects a few props and put them around the table. We see the empty bowl, we see the prop glasses on top of the book, which is not a Bible, it's a dictionary, a loaf of bread, and a knife, and Mr. Wilden was asked to bow his head as though he was performing a prayer. The photo was captured, prints were made, and they would be sold at the Minnesota Photography Association convention, and they would sell like wildfire. And if anybody says otherwise, you're a damn liar! And then he would start to sell them to tourists, and he would sell them all over the place. And everywhere he sold these things, they sold out very rapidly. This image would be seen in homes, churches, restaurants, government buildings, all over the place. Growing up, he was in every single one of my relative's house. I thought for sure I was related to him. Should be room enough for the both of you. By 1926, Enstrom would locate Mr. Wilden to sign over all of the rights to his likeness because he was making so much money he wanted to expand the product and he needed to have the licensure to be able to do that. But unfortunately for Mr. Wilden, he had no idea the amount of volume that his photo would have. And he signed over all of those rights for only $5. But now, with full copyright licensing power, Enstrom would license this photograph to Augsburg's publishing house in 1930, who was affiliated with the Lutheran Church, and this photograph would be distributed and sold all around the world, making the Enstrom family very, very wealthy in the process. Well, I got something to offer. <coughs> After Mr. Enstrom's death and the license was transferred to his daughter, there would be some modifications to this photograph. 
a secondary light source would be added and this image would become the more popular image and many people that had bought it previously would want the updated version. Eventually, people wanted to have this photo in color. So they would add some colorization to it so it would look a little bit more like a painting. You know, I think it works quite well, just the way it is. After his $5 payoff, Mr. Wilden completely disappeared and no one is really for certain what happened to him. In 2002, the state of Minnesota would call this Grace by Eric Enstrom, the official photograph of the state of Minnesota. A photograph about being happy with what you got that made a guy a whole lot of money by taking a photograph of a drunk guy that he took advantage of for $5 and some change. But maybe I'm being a little too cynical about it. It's a great photograph no matter how you slice it. Let me know what you think about this image down in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe for more content. You have a good day. Now go to your shanties, all of you. You're scaring the fish away.